Hi, I'm Brad Gebhardt from Verb Mono. You're watching this on the Big MX Radio YouTube channel, but this is the audio from the Verb Moto Vanilla Racing Broadcast AMA Pro Motocross Preview with myself as well as Chase Stallo. Unfortunately, we didn't have video for the entire podcast, but I wanted to jump on here quickly to let you know how much fun I'm having working with the guys over at Verb and that you can find more of my content over on their website. Look for me at some of their Shred Tour events and everything else to do with Verb. Thanks for watching this video. Take care. All right, cool. Um, starting in three, two, one. Welcome to the Verb Moto Vanilla Racing Broadcast AMA Pro Motocross Preview. It's your boy Brad from Verb Moto. You're getting me because Wes Williams is currently missing in Mexico somewhere. He's lost. And you're not getting video because my colleague on the other line here, Chase, does not know how to use the cameras. If there is any type of video edition of this particular podcast it will be this audio laid over the album art that you come to know and love now introducing the second and final member of this broadcast chase stallo chase how's it going oh it's great do we do we call it a broadcast though if there's no video or, or are we just gonna roll with it does it well, matter like the original broadcasts we were were audio broadcasts so i we're actually ahead. Yeah, a radio we're, broadcast like, right this is like sort of like this is the retro version of the show Sure. Yeah, I like that. We'll go with that. Perfect. Uh, coming to you not so live here uh, on the <laughs> Verb Broadcast Network. Um, Chase, we have 11 rounds of motocross, 17 rounds of supercross, three SMX series races at the very final, the, the, the playoffs. This sport hates psychologically satisfying numbers, um, which actually hurts my heart. I, I liked 12 rounds. We're not getting that anymore. Uh, they cut out one of the Fox Raceway rounds. Uh, I would love for this thing to go back to 12 rounds, but it uh, looks like we've got 12 uh, for now. What are your thoughts on, on that development? Yeah. Can, can you mask that for me? How many races is that? Mm, no. <laughs> Uh, I think it's probably too many. How about that? Even yeah, it's too many. Again. It's too many. Is it 32? It is. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll go with that. Um, 18. I think as as you've seen in Supercross, like the it's attrition 32. rate with that many rounds, like you're you're losing a lot of guys, right? Like we're coming into this without Malcolm, Tomac, um, Ken's going to World SX. You know, it's just a lot of – uh, like we uh, star power we are missing in the 450 class so oh the 450 you know, class it, is limping it is an absolute triage unit right now the 450 factory guys uh we'll we'll, we'll jump into that I think we shortly have five. but sorry we have five fact we have five factory guys this weekend i think that's i right? believe so Something yeah like yeah five factory yeah. guys okay. it's going to be the year of the privateer um uh, but chase let's cut to the chase and likely talk about chase when we discuss who's winning this 450 title, I don't want to like to to bore both of our listeners in into waiting until the end where we we give our predictions for no, this championship. We're not Let's just get it. St- we're going straight in, baby. No, yeah, we, we're we're going, we're going, we're coming in hot with our predictions. So, uh, can you at least give me uh, who, who's your championship winner? Who's your guy? I think you got to go Sexton. Like, I don't. I think it's between three people. I think it's Sexton, Lawrence, or Ferrandis. Yes. And I think sex is the favorite. I think the podium in, I think, honestly, I'm going to say eight of the 11 rounds is going to be those three guys in some order. And more often than not, it's going to be Chase out Ooh, front. That's I think. Bold. All right, that's I, bold. I, I, hey, we're, and we're going to get to some bold predictions later on, but um, it's going to be those three guys. And I think it's going to be Chase out front. Um, yeah. it, you, like, you give me a guy who just came off a 450 Supercross championship. Uh, a guy who took Eli Tomac down to the final round. Um, I, I, I have a, I'm buying a lot of stock in that rider um, against a, like, hey, an extremely talented rookie, but a rookie nonetheless in Jet Lawrence. And Dylan Ferrandis, who, since he won his championship back in 2021, has been an absolute band-aid 
Uh, he has not been healthy. Maybe he's at full strength right now. Maybe he has a lot of wind in his sails from a lot of time uh, practicing outdoors and focusing on outdoors since he had that uh, the injury that held him out of Supercross. Regardless, I I just I like there there there's something to be said for Big Mo, and that's called momentum rolling into the series. Chase Chase Sexton currently has it. Yeah, and I think that's the only advantage you could probably give Ferrandis is like he's been focusing on outdoors, where Chase was probably focusing on Supercross. Um, right. So you know, Ferrandis might have the advantage early, but man, like watching Sexton last year, I was just like, dude, get out of the way. <laughs> Him and Tomac. Get out of the way. It's us. So I, you know, think it's going to be very hard um, for for Jet, especially like, you know, he's obviously super fast, but like, you know, I think it's going to take some time for him, maybe a couple rounds. Um, but yeah, I think it's I think it's Sexton, man. I don't I don't know how you pick against him. I guess is my point. Certainly, and like you know what, there's a lot of people who could say that Jet he has a lot of success and some a lot of history doing well at Fox Raceway. You know who else goes really fast at Fox Raceway? Chase Sexton. In fact, that was his first 450 national win. Um, it's going to be a table set for two for those guys. They're both great starters. Um, I, a lot of people point towards obviously Jet having a day of all days at uh, Motocross Des Nations uh, at Redbud. Um, I'll take one isolated, uh, race and like, obviously he, the guy had himself an awesome day. Good for him. Uh, but I'll, I'll give the nod to, uh, Chase, a guy who, uh, fed Eli Tomac his lunch multiple times last year. And unfortunately we're not going to have Eli this season. Uh, that would have been uh, a huge uh, addition to the series. That was, yeah, that, that, that was about as big a blow as you could possibly have to the sport. Uh, when he tore that Achilles, that was the Achilles heel of the season, I think. Yeah, I think, uh, poor Davey. I mean, he's just like, come Seriously? on, man. <laughs> uh, I guess we did get Webb back, which is good. But, you know, I think Webb said he got back on the bike Friday. So, like, you know, that's, that's going to be tough. Barsha will be back at some point, Anderson. But, man, coming in, it's just like, geez. Hey. It's hard to get excited for it. But I think after this first round, and watching Sexton and Fernandez and Lawrence, like it's going to be like, okay, maybe it's not as bad as we think. Yeah, no, it very well could be. And you know what? You know who only had one 30-minute moto rolling into his championship year back in 2009? It's Chad Reed. And I see yeah. a lot of parallels yeah. between uh, Cooper Webb and Chad Reed. So who knows? Like, crazier yeah. things have happened. Well, and at some point, I think it's like, Webb's going to figure out the 450 outdoors, right? Like, I think everybody, like, kind of dismisses how fucking fast he was on a 250 outdoors. Yes. Um, he won titles. <laughs> he, it's not like he sucked outdoors. So, you know, maybe he does figure it out this year. And, you know, we got a four-man battle, or even AP gets in there. I guess you never really know. But I think coming in, it's those things. Certainly. What we do know is we will not have Eli. We will not have anybody on a Suzuki aside from Derek Drake. You know what? I'm a big Derek Drake no, fan. No, no, no. But... Freddie. 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 Fre uh, Freddie and um, Welton. Or, uh, Freddie and Welton? Pep. Okay. Yeah. So that's that. there's your your 9-10 spot every moto? Yep. Okay. Uh, Freddie, can, Freddie might be able to sneak, sneak around 6 or 7. How long has Freddie Noren been like sneaky fast in the series? Like I, I, I remember career. him like filling in for Factory Honda back in like I want to say it was like 2010. Yeah, it was 2010. I, I, he's been sneaky fast for like 45 years. Yes. No, like he's <laughs> like, it's like he's the, the guy. Like, wait, of... he still plays college football. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. still throwing touchdowns. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Freddie, Freddie will, Freddie will get in there, and and, and you know, Bolton. I, I have no idea. He was really good last year, um, but yeah, like you said, dude, I, I think this is a certainly a year for for some guys to kind of put their mark. Um, some guys who in the past was probably ten to fifteen, and heck, this year they could be five to six, maybe five to ten. They they very well could be now. Like you yourself, uh, you're a couple of years my senior. I'm 34 years old. You grew up in the 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 70s, I do believe. Uh, who did what oh, what uh, 450 <laughs> privateer did you look up to back then? The 70s. Come on, man. I'm not that. I old. know. Uh, you're, like dude, yeah, I think you're legitimately like maybe five five years older than me, top. So 
can we, can we cut this? Dude, I don't know. 1970s? Rick Ryan? Was he racing this? That's 80s. Okay. Let's go Rick Ryan. All right, we'll go Rick Ryan uh, for a privateer. He did win the, I believe, 85 Daytona Supercross, only privateer to technically yeah. do it, although Ever. you could also asterisk uh, Justin Brayton because that wasn't a factory motorcycle at the time. Um, but, yeah, that's that's a discussion for another time. Um, of all these guys, and you can even go with some of the ones that are hurt, uh, who would you most want to go for a hot dog with? Ooh, that's a good question. I think Jet. I think Jet would just be fun and goofy and okay. Honestly, Dylan probably you put doesn't sprinkles like on hot... it or what? Yeah, he probably throws some sprinkles on it. I doubt Dylan eats hot dogs. Uh, no way. Chase probably doesn't either. No. Um, I feel like Jet's young enough though, where he's still like, yeah, I'll eat a hot dog and go to race. I'm good. Yeah, like there's a, he's the donut boy for a reason. Like everyone, like kind of like right? I think a lot of people forget that. Like yeah, he has the Jets and donuts, but that was literally because. Uh, he he was training with Johnny O'Mara. He wins the mon- the final ever Monster Cup, yeah. um, Supercross Futures, and uh, yeah, he just has donuts. A bag like just it was the my favorite part about that whole oh, scene was just a random plastic bag full of donuts that were yeah, just honey he, di- he, honey glazed crap donuts, and he's just scarfing these things down. Yeah, he had uh, he made sure his mechanic took him down there for him. He he, yes. was, he basically Babe Ruth it. He called a shot. He did he call a shot. He's like. The- Bring You're not taking donut. those down just I'm to take them down. I'm winning this damn thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's, uh, and also, Babe Ruth, big hot dog guy. See the correlation I'm putting together here? Now we're all tying it together. Everything's all uh, we're tying it together. Six degrees of Jets and Donuts. I absolutely love it. Um, of the uh, the Troy Dog Pineapple Squad, uh, I don't oh, know God. how many of them are racing the Nationals. I do believe that Mr. Do they Starling race outdoors? I think they be... thought they were Supercross only. Is that Supercross only, or like? But that does it does Chiz not showing up at like Southwick? Just does does that not count? And then he gets like a seventh. Maybe Hard Dog. Is Hard Dog? Right? I saw Hard Dog might be going to World Supercross though. I think he might no be. Starling. I think he's going to be globe trotting. Yeah, no Harling, no uh, Derek Kelly. He doesn't race outdoors, right? No. I think I think the squad's been put on put on hold. Yeah, qu- squads on ice. That's fair. Um, <laughs> there is no squad. <laughs> ooh, that's that's a tough go. Yeah, um, tough, tough luck for Troy Dog. Yeah, so so who who's in worse shape right now, Troy Dog's te- squad or the four fifty uh, class right now? Uh, the squad. There is no squad. At least four fifty are are trotting out some guys. Yeah. Last last guy I want to t- touch on before we move over to the two fifties, Adam C and Cirillo. Uh, speed wise, he can hang with these guys for a lap or oh, two. Yeah. Un- the unfortunate part of it is that outdoor motocross is a grind, and there are long days, long motos, and uh, with the the situation with Adam's arm, like, he's not one hundred percent. And I, yeah. I fear that we're going to see him lead a lot of laps early, and uh, and and bring it home a lot of fifth, sixth. Yeah, I agree. I mean, and it sucks because. Adam has the speed, right? Like, yeah, I, don't, I love Adam. Honestly, big no big. one questions that. It's just, man, like, can he hold on for that long? I don't know. Maybe the latest thing he got done is, it fixes it. Um, I think he's had like seven surgeries or something. Like, it's insane. So, yeah, I don't know, man. I think it's just kind of wait and see with him. Like, if he's healthy, yeah, he'll, he'll get on the podium a bunch. Yeah, he very well and could. That's just a big end, you know. Just, just as a side thought, um, like obviously the, throughout Adam's pro career, he's had a lot of injuries. He's had a lot of pressure. Uh, do you feel like he harbors any ill feelings towards Wes Williams and for a, to lesser extent, perhaps the entire Verb crew for um, like putting showcasing Adam in such a light during his amateur career, basically building him up to like godlike status? Um, to basically have set him up for the situation he's in now. A lot of the, the pressure that Adam feels today is basically to blame uh, on uh, on Wes Williams, and he should wear that full heart. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I yeah. totally agree. That's like I, I, dude, what a great point. This is all Wes Williams' fault. Yeah, like, and the, he's also it's Wes Williams' fault is why we're doing this, and he's not even on this broadcast. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Right, so if anyone no, has yeah, it's all Wes's fault. 
Definitely. If anyone has any complaints, uh, they can email uh, Wesley Williams at verbmoto.com. Uh, he'll get back to you as soon as he can. Yeah. Moving over to the 250 class, uh, I, I, I could read down the list or I could just tell you that there are 18 factory backed riders. Uh, you corrected me um, that Styles Robertson is out. So that makes 17 factory backed riders. Is there anyone from the list that you're looking at right now, which I shared with you via Google Docs, that uh, any of these riders rolling out of the last uh, of uh, Fox Raceway, which should be familiar to absolutely every single person on this list, uh, with the exception of maybe Tom Vial, um, although he's probably ridden there more times than I have recently. Uh, are there anyone on this list that would say, like, I'm super stoked on my 18th as I roll out of uh, Fox Raceway uh, on Saturday evening? No. No. That's a Kalik. problem because one of them's going to get that, that position. Yeah. I mean, and they might get even worse. Yes. I mean, there's a lot of dudes that that's with no, probably that's aren't with even no, on this uh, list where you're like, whoa, okay. Yeah, like, like that's with like jamming Josh Faree's not just like sticking it in there and getting a thirteenth somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Like, dude, it's stacked. Um, now, when I say stacked, does that mean we're gonna have nine different winners? No, but it's a lot of it's gonna be a lot of fast dudes battling for tenth. Oh yeah. Like there, there's gonna be a time when I'm looking at the ticker or the tower next to the results, and it's gonna say Levi Kitchen twelfth spot yeah. and not moving forward, and you're like, what the actual fuck? Yeah, I mean it's and it's that's no slight against Levi. It's just like, no. good lord, man. It's yeah. a lot of fast dudes in this class. We got rookies, we got veterans, we got guys who are like I've never. This is a complete side note. I've never rolled into a season. With so many guys, you know they're changing teams next year or they're moving up to the 450s. Justin Cooper, last year in the class, he's gone. Hunter Lawrence, last year in the class, 450 next year. Levi Kitchen, changing brands. Blue will be on Gas Gas next, next season. Um, no, Levi's PC. Uh, PC oh, yeah, that. Levi's PC. Um, Shimoda, Honda. Uh, Ryder yeah. Francisco. he's going to TLD. Like... Uh, Jet Reynolds is is has there ever been a more hot seat than Jet Reynolds? Like, is Jet Reynolds just like Bobby Bonds two thousand two? <laughs> Bobby Bonds. <laughs> wow, that's a throwback, uh, dude. And yeah, I think and poor Jet, man. Like the other Jet. Uh, yeah, man. He no Jet is not. It poor. just looked like it looked like at one point it's like watch out for this dude, and then man, he got on that big bike and just has been hurt every year so i just hope he gets out there gets through 11 rounds you yes know, and i always just put his best foot forward honestly and... like I, I i no ill will towards the kid it's super unfortunate the way his his amateur career wound down and like his basically his disjointed entrance into the pro scene has just been like kind of not what you'd want it to be uh but yeah like i just hope he puts some decent rides in and is able to land on his feet for next year somewhere and, and it's and man if he wants to look at somebody look at what hunter lawrence has done like yeah hunter was done loretta's 2020 done was gonna quit yeah because the same thing he just was hurt and he was over it and look at what he's you know he's completely turned his career around so you know, you hope for someone like Jet, who's who's obviously got immense talent, that he can kind of figure it out, right? You, you want to see it from a kid who's pretty much dedicated his entire life to this, right? Um, at least have a chance. Yeah, a guy who showed so much promise. Uh, and he was one moto shy of going three for three. Uh, or get, like completely sweeping the motos three seasons in a row at Loretta's, which is something that's never been done. Um, like obviously he did that uh, back in the day. He was on like 65s and super minis. That feels like a long time ago now, and in reality it is. But um, like I still believe he can be that guy. I think he can. He can dust himself off and, and rebuild that. Like the the skill set is there. Uh, he's just got to have the right attitude about it uh, and, and be given an opportunity. Not that he hasn't already been given lots of opportunities, but he does need another one uh, moving forward. Maybe it's with Pro Circuit. Maybe it's with somebody else. But either way, if he's given it. Uh, and he approaches it with the right attitude, he can make that happen. 
Two guys that are a little bit wild cards for the four, uh, 250 class. Tom Vial, who you know is going to be out front and styling every single round because he's been starting on greats since he was probably five years old. Uh, he's been on KTMs forever. And, uh, and uh, yeah, like he just he just gets good starts. So And he's been getting used to new tracks since the beginning of time because it's not like they put those guys globetrot all over the world racing in tracks in Argentina. They don't have a lot of time on those tracks if you don't, if, uh, if you're if you're not aware uh yeah they get the saturday practice but i don't think it's going to be a problem for him whatsoever and then there's rj hampshire like the ultimate like picture of aggression and like just go for Great. it every and single guts yeah. And <laughs> yeah no he he's guts and glory uh but he does yeah. have the speed to run with those top guys yeah i, I think uh you know I, not every american follows gps um actually not many do so I think Vial is one of those guys that, you know, all the bros and, and, and Fox are going to be like, who the hell is this dude? Oh, wait. Yeah. He's super, like, what? His number, I don't even know what number he is. 200 and something? Holy shit. <laughs> uh, Vial is my biggest, like, what is he going to do? I have no idea. He could come out and win. He could come out and get six. I have no clue. I think he's going to be good. But I don't know how good. Very big question mark for me, Vial. Yeah, he'll throw the 128 machine uh, out front, and everyone's gonna say like, "Who is that privateer out like just like crushing it? Is that yeah. is that Ricky Ryan, um, or the second coming of somebody like that?" But uh, yeah, honestly, like unfortunately, um, and it's probably the first time ever that KTM's had two guys with the last name starting with V. Uh, I think I'd take Vial over Voland uh, like 11 times out of 11 when it comes to these rounds. Unfortunately. Um, still think that Max is going to be able to land on his feet. Sounds like he's, uh, he's sewed up a deal, uh, on a blue bike for next year, but, uh, yeah, it'll yeah. be, uh, it'll be interesting. Yeah. I, I, again, I think Vial could come out and finish second at the opening round. Like why the hell not? Yeah. He's got, he's, he's, he's spent a lot of time champion. at, uh, at, at Paula, AKA Fox Raceway. Yeah. I mean, he's the two time world champ. Like, Let's not forget that, <laughs> right? Like, hundred percent. Or he could get six, like you said. I mean, look at there's eighteen factory guys. Like, if you're just a bit off your game, you're gonna get six. Yeah, I think his ace in the hole is the fact that he gets those starts. Like starting up front, especially in this class, is gonna be so so oh, important. Yeah. Uh, give me your three title favorites. Uh, we talked about 17 guys that are going to be uh, vying for those spots, but unfortunately, um, there's it, it always it happens every single year. A few guys separate themselves. Give me your three guys yeah. for the uh, for the 250 class. I think it, it's I think it's Hunter Cooper. Eh, be out. <laughs> I don't, third guy's gonna be tough. J Mart. Just. But I'll go be out. I'll go. I'll go those three. Just shitting on uh, Shimoda, like no, Michael no, Moseman, who RJ, who no, no. I just think those are the those are the three guys that are going to be okay. battling it out. Okay, that's it's a but little bit harder to pick. Than honestly, it is the I think it's going to be Hunter and, and Jay Coop. Okay, I, I think those are the two the the two clear cut favorites in my yep. opinion. No, and Jay Coop's going to have the pace. You know that. Um, oh yeah. Out of all these guys, you've watched a lot of these guys ride, whether they're amateurs. Wait, 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 wait. Pros. Who's your title picks there, bud? Oh, okay. You, oh, you, you want my analysis. Okay. I'm an I'm an analyst now. I'm going to go yeah. with Hunter Lawrence uh, for your championship. That's my front runner. He is my favorite of all favorites for this championship. Uh, shortly behind him, I'm going to go with uh, Justin Cooper. Uh, Jay Coop, I think he's going to be extremely fast the entire year. And uh, here's a guy who's probably not on anybody's radar. Actually, you know what? He's, he's on a lot of people's radar if you happen to be on one side of the conversation uh, on social media. And that's Hayden Deegan. I honestly think oh, that uh, he's that a guy, he, he, he puts in a lot of work. He's got a ton of speed. And if we see the, the Hayden Deegan that we saw in Supercross rather than the two nationals that we, we watched... Uh, he's going to get his fair share of podiums and, uh, wow. and he's, yeah, and he's got that star bike underneath him, which is uh -huh. in my oh, opinion, yeah. still the best bike in the class. And he's a, he's 140 pounds soaking wet. So, um, yeah, yeah. he's, he's going to get some good starts on that thing. No, I agree. I I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Hayden can do. Like he, 
I thought he would be really good in Supercross, and he was really, really, really good. So, um, yeah, it, it, again, another guy that you could be like, wait, hey, Deegan's in eighth? Or, wait, Deegan's in second? Like, yeah. you just don't or, know. How come, yeah, how come Deegan has led the last 17 minutes of this race, and, and he's just checking <laughs> yeah, out? Yeah, right. Yeah, Check you your just watch. never know. And, dude, it, and it happened so quick. Like, dude, I remember Jeremy Martin. One year, it was just like, clicked and it was just like wait no one's touching jeremy martin yeah oh like, he went from being like number 77 on a carbureted yamaha with and like he yeah. led a couple of laps at millville and then did a bunch of fuck all uh to like the next year he was just like yep. d- demoralizing fools yeah so like i think there could be a guy that's like wait this guy's fucking crushing like okay <laughs> yeah and they don't don't count out Ryder, Ryder D either. We we hyped that kid oh, yeah. for about three decades uh, before um, before he he turned pro. And uh, yeah, like everyone's super quiet on him right now. Obviously, he hasn't done uh, a whole lot pro wise. His two nationals wasn't anything to scream about. And then he didn't race Supercross this last year. But like he's almost in the and same Hymas position too. as a guy like uh, Ferrandis. He's he's been focusing on outdoors. Yeah, Hymas. Um, I mean, I miss. good Lord, just go, go down through the list. Jordan Smith's back outdoors. Like is Smitty uh, racing outdoors? Spanish kid. Yeah. Yes, Guillaume, racing Ferris. Outdoors. Yeah. You got Ferris. Like again, they're going to have six I, semis. I really... They got like the pit presence for star racing <laughs> Yamaha. Like, could you imagine if this was box fan days? Like Ford oh doesn't God. even build that like, many box fans. I do haul truck. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Uh, no, I, 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 yeah, man, there's so many guys that are just like, and we're not even talking about all of them either. And it's just like, run through the list, man. Like Shimoda, Shimoda's going to be really good. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, ex- yeah. I'm way more excited for the 250 class. I'll say that. Absolutely. No, I, I can't, I can't stress that enough. Like, um, the gate's going to drop and our jaws are going to drop at who's out front. Um, it very well could be, uh, Max Boland. He pulled that off two, uh, at the beginning of last year, uh, the bike let go. Uh, but at the time he was out front styling. Yeah. Um, speaking of style, who in this class has like the best style in your opinion? You just love to watch this kid do, do what he does. Um, uh, I love Deegan's style. I, right? I hate to jump on the, the bandwagon, but it's, it's, it's clean, man. I do like Deegan's style. Yeah. It's just, it, it's such an aggressive, right. like he's, his, his chin is over the bars, elbows up and he's just like, yeah, yeah. He throws the bike around he, nice. He's getting it. Yeah. I like the, no, he, fair, okay, fair enough. Last few questions I have for you before we hang up this call. Um, are there any tracks on the national series that you watch, whether it's in person or on TV and you just like, you know what? Damn it. I'm, I'm cleaning up the bike this afternoon. I'm going riding like this, this, this track makes me want to go ride. And inversely, what track do you watch? And be like, I don't want anything to do with that. And why is it Fox raceway? <laughs> not, going, not going there. Uh, I do like Millville. I think that's everyone's kind of favorite. It's just like, Man, those hills and just like it just feels like it's like it's almost like it feels like you're riding on clouds. Like obviously it's not. It's probably pretty rough and gnarly, but like it just looks so inviting to come and just shred it and flow it and I don't know. It just looks fun. Uh, no. Nobel will be the top. As someone who has collected a podium in the two fifty B consolation race uh oh, okay. at Millville. Yeah, I, I can tell you that uh, it is an absolutely an absolute blast to ride that track, especially in uh, in, in in full race uh, national trim. Uh, okay. Last question I have for you here on the Verb Moto Vanilla Racing broadcast is: Give me a bold prediction for both classes, Chase Dollo. Uh, let me think here. Uh, Four fifty. I will go – we only see two overall winners. I'm not saying who they are. We only see two, though. Two overall winners. Yep. Not moto winners, overalls. We only see two. Uh, wow. 250, I will say – I will say mm, Vegan gets three overall podiums. 
I don't know that's three overall bold, podium. But... Okay. Yeah, that's okay. what I got. Uh my 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 bold prediction. Adam Cian Cerullo and Cooper Webb both win uh national rounds. Oh. Okay. Four fifty. Oh, okay. That's my this okay. is that's a bold prediction. I would consider that a bold, that's a bold. prediction. That's bold. I like it. For both like of them, it. considering the only time that uh, Webb won a national was a 1-1 performance 2019 Millville in the mud. Uh, and then for the 450 class, um, I'm going to say my bold prediction is the individual who wins this championship does not win the most amount of nationals. Wait, motos or overalls? Overalls. Like the, the the guy who ends up to do the math here, <laughs> but yeah, the guy who ends up winning the championship does not end up winning yep. the most amount of nationals. Like, uh, okay, so go that ahead mean, and clip that these out because I, I feel like mine's a lot closer than yours. But yeah, clip them out. Fair I enough, like that's fine. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll uh, we'll see how it all uh, f- unfolds. Chase Stallo here, like I said, Verb Moto Vanilla Racing broadcast. This has been the AMA Pro Motocross preview. Thank you guys so much for listening to us. If this happens to end up on YouTube, thank you for watching. Um, the ear poison is now done. And uh, like I said, if you have any complaints whatsoever, take it up with Wes Williams. He is on Twitter every once in a while. But like I said, he's also lost in Mexico right now. Wes, yeah. please come home. We miss you. Yeah, watch out for the cartel, bud. Perfect. All right, so that's the end of the podcast right there. Thank you for listening to the audio version of the Verb Moto Vanilla Racing Broadcast. This has been the AMA Pro Motocross Preview. Thanks for listening. Now go out there and get some throttle therapy of your own.